Hey everybody, welcome back to The Kelly O Show. I have been meaning to record this episode on network marketing as an industry for a while. And considering it's my notes here have been sitting on my desk for the better part of probably six to eight weeks. And every week something comes up and I put it off, not intentionally, but Considering everything that's going on in, in this world with the coronavirus and how many jobs it's affected, I have more people literally every day who maybe were um, poo-pooing uh, different opportunities like this in the past, but now a lot of people have lost their jobs, have had their hours cut back. Um, their certainty is no longer certain as far as their job, um, and people are just having all kinds of issues with income now, I thought now is a really opportune time for me to record this. What I, what I hope to do here is just give you a lot of information to evaluate because um, whether this is, you certainly have an opportunity, you'll see at the end of this video um, and this podcast to join me in some of the, there's several companies that I'm involved in to varying degrees. I shop from some companies, some companies I'm an active consultant from or a consultant for, excuse me. Um, but there's so many other opportunities with fantastic companies out there. And what I hope is that this um, podcast here, this video is going to help a lot of you get past the hangups that you might have. Um, understandably, you know, there's a lot of misinformation that's floating around about network marketing, but I hope that this will calm a lot of your fears, answer a lot of your questions. I've taken note of so many of you that I personally know um, some of the objections you shared with me, some of the hangups that you have, some of the misunderstandings that you might have about the industry, about potentially certain companies. And I'm going to cover all of that for you here and put this out and let any of you use this as needed. If you have questions for me personally after the show, um, you can reach out to me, whether you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to this on the podcast um, from the Kelly O Show, if you just want to reach out to me on my blog, whatever's best, you do that. Um, but again, the purpose of the show is to educate you on network marketing as an industry, uh, not necessarily specific companies. I will mention some specific companies that I know of that I'm a customer of, some of which I'm involved with as a consultant. But let's get started. Um, network marketing is an industry um, that has been around for quite a while now. I'm going to share a lot of stats with you. Um, you can do additional research if you want. I'm not going to share every conceivable stat on the planet. I'm sharing what I feel is the most relevant. So typically when someone like you has been approached by somebody else to either buy products from them because they've gotten involved in a network marketing company, like let me give you some examples of some network marketing companies so that um, you are familiar because a lot of times people might be familiar with some companies, not even realize they're a network marketing company, um, but they've been approached by a different one and they're all skeptical and they've got their, you know, hair up on their back and they're like, Ooh, is this one of those weird pyramid things? <laughs> Which <laughs> just makes me laugh. Um, but I'll get into that in a second. Um, so some of the companies that I know of that I either buy from, am aware of, have bought from in the past, or have some type of involvement with, um, Beachbody, for example, I have been using Beachbody workouts for as long as I can remember. I think they have some of the best, uh, workout programs on the planet. In fact, I am rejoining them as we speak because frankly, I have so many people that come to me that ask for at-home workouts if somebody has a either an affiliate program or in this case a direct marketing network marketing mlm opportunity if you can make money recommending something to somebody why wouldn't you and that is a hang up i will address down the road because that is what keeps a lot of people surprisingly from taking di taking a dive into whether it's a network marketing opportunity or an affiliate opportunity or whatever for some reason, people don't want to make money. I don't understand that. Why wouldn't you? If you're not doing anything shifty or illegal or taking advantage of somebody, why would you turn down money? I don't, I can't understand that, that mindset, but we'll get into that later. 
Beachbody is one of the companies that I love. Uh, I purchase Lash uh, Boost from Rodan and Fields. They are an exceptional company. I'm going to be uh, sharing that story because that is actually a tremendous story on the legitimacy and efficacy of this network marketing industry, um, which I, it, it's a good time to note is a $190 billion annual organ, uh, not organization, um, profession, $190 billion in goods are being sold through network marketing. That should tell you right there, uh, the size and scope of this industry and this profession. This is not poo poo side stuff that's being done in, you know, the black market. This is a legitimate, um, monitored business and it's just a different business model. And frankly, it's one of the smartest business models out there today particularly in the year 2020, this is a very timely, even pre-coronavirus, I would say this, but particularly coronavirus and, and after, uh, this is going to be a very um, opportune business opportunity for most people to make a stream of income. It doesn't have to be your only stream of income. It doesn't have to be the only thing you do, um, but you would be foolish to not look into it if you find a company that's perfect for you. And we will go into that as well at the end. So Beachbody, Rodan and Fields, you've probably seen a lot of uh, folks sharing Beauty Counter. Beauty Counter is an MLM network marketing company. Um, Arbon, I actually, that was the first network marketing company. Actually, I think it was Pampered Chef. Pampered Chef and Tastefully Simple were the first couple of network marketing companies I was exposed to and started to purchase from. Actually, there's more now that I'm thinking about it. Um, and I don't know if this one in particular, uh, Gold Canyon Candles, I think Gold Canyon is a network marketing company, but oh, Salt City Candles. I bought Salt City Candles uh, from an independent consultant. Then I bought Gold Canyon Candles from an independent consultant. Um, I've been to Pampered Chef parties. I'm sure you've been to Pampered Chef parties. Tastefully Simple, Silpata Jewelry. I believe they're no longer in business. Um, uh, I'm just trying to mention some some names of companies that you will you might be familiar with if you're watching this. Of course, you know I've recently become very involved with Isogenics. I'm extremely um, impressed with their product lines for fitness, health, and wellness, nutrition, um, Isogenics. Let's see. Um, so I've mentioned Rodan and Fields, Beachbody, Pampered Chef, Tastefully Simple. Arbonne is a skincare company. I still buy there. I think they have the best uh, eyeliner on the planet. They have great skincare. Um, I just use Globiotic Skincare right now. That is not an MLM company. Um, so those are just some of the companies. Uh, <laughs> I almost said Arbonne again. Avon. Um, Mary Kay has been around forever. Um, in fact, that's a great book to read by the founder. So these are some, some household names that have been around for a long, long time. Um, do your research. I mean, I am not asking you to listen to this podcast and go out and make a knee jerk decision. You are a wise consumer. If at any point, if someone's offering you a job, if somebody is offering you the opportunity to join a network marketing company as a business builder or a consultant, whatever that company calls them, do your research. But if you're smart and you listen to my pointers, you'll know what to look for. And then you can make an informed decision. You know, it's not, it's not the right fit for everybody because the bottom line is I'm going to share all of the stats and figures and what to look for so that you can choose a, a network marketing company um, that you'd like to get involved with. Or maybe you've already been invited to a network marketing opportunity and you're listening to this podcast because you want to hear more about the industry and make sure you're not getting involved in some black market op situation. Um, I still encourage you to do your own research, but ultimately you have to know this. The thing about network marketing is this is a profession. It is an industry. It still is a job. And I'm leaving a, a pause there for a reason. The big misunderstandings that tend to happen with network marketing are that people hear a lot of the huge success stories. I know I did when I was first exposed to Arbonne skincare. I had a lot of women um, who would tell me, oh, join and, you know, invest this amount of money and buy all of these. Now, I will tell you some of the things to look out for to not do. These are practices that are very much frowned upon now. But 
10, 15 years ago, not so much. There were people that would work the system and, and try to get themselves up to higher levels of income faster. That's definitely not as much the case anymore. Those are things that if you see them now to be a red flag. 10 or 15 years ago, there were practices like this that are kind of shifty that you would stay away from. I mean, the bottom line is across the board, what you should know about any network marketing opportunity, it should not cost you hardly anything. Probably I'm going to estimate and say no more than $200 at the most is what you should be putting down um, as a requirement to get started. Most companies, if, if, if you wanted to say, what's the bare minimum I can put down for money to get started? Most companies, I would say, would be $40 to $150, meaning hey, here's your basic package. If somebody approaches you and says, well, to get started, you have to spend $5,000, that's bullshit, and that's something that you should really investigate. That's probably a red flag. Um, most highly reputable um, network marketing companies who are a member of the Direct Sales Association. That's, a, that's an organization you're going to want to look up. Um, for me, that's usually how I measure whether I will get involved with a company or not, if they are a member of the Direct Sales Association, because that is a governing entity that um, ensures ethics within the organizations. It's like the FDA or the FTC, the, the Direct Sales Association, right? That's, that's my measure. Um, if a company is paying that organization to be um, monitored and watched and they are abiding by their rules and, and regulations, that's a good sign. So across the board, you should know when joining pretty much any network marketing organization, you should not be expected and told in order to get started, you have to spend $1,200. In order to get started, you have to buy all of this product and keep it in your house. Those days are gone. There definitely were times 10, 15 years ago where people would again game the systems and they would say, like, for example, when I started in Arbon, there was a woman um, she was very shifty and she told me like, here's what I have people started. I didn't, I wasn't savvy enough and assertive enough to push back and say, I don't have that kind of money to get started. Um, I think I did spend that kind of money. And back then they encouraged people to keep stock in their house, to host parties and sell physical stock. That is typically not the case. Most companies do not expect you to keep product in your house, okay? So I will reiterate all this stuff towards the end of the show, but I just wanna make sure that when things pop up in my head, these are typical things that people have questions about, know that up front. So network marketing is an industry, it is a profession. It is a, mo a business model that is very smart, that is very legal, that is very monitored, and is very popular, I will reference again, $190 billion globally per year. And there are approximately 116 million people who are participating in network marketing businesses. If that many people were operating in pyramid schemes or Ponzi schemes or black market operations, don't you think somebody would have caught on to that? Okay. This is legal. This is not a pyramid scheme. Pyramid schemes are illegal. As long as you are joining a company, and again, I recommend that you look at companies who are associated with the Direct Sales Association. That is my recommendation, not a rule. If you are joining a company who has products or services that are sold, and that's what you are asked to do to make money, you make money based on selling more product. Yes, quite often you will also be building a team so that you have more people that are helping you sell more product. But if everybody's getting paid selling products or services, you're actually, that's called capitalism. That's called like how we, what I do if I go to a store or a restaurant in non-corona days, right? In normal days. As long as that's what's going on and that's how you make money, that's legitimate, that's normal. And that's just a different way of what we do in normal corporate America, what we do in any mall, what we do in any bookstore. Um, it's just a smarter business model. And we will go over that um, again, a little bit 
further on in the show. So network marketing, we've talked about, it's 190 billion, not million, billion dollar industry employing 116 million people plus over uh, the globe. Okay, it's been around forever. Uh, the company, as I've mentioned a lot of companies that you've probably heard of. Um, I am involved as an active consultant for um, Isogenics because I firmly believe in their products. I also am re-signing up with Beachbody because I'm recommending their workouts all the time and it just makes sense for me. I am a customer of a lot of companies like Arbonne, like Rodan and Fields, like Pampered Chef, like Tastefully Simple. Um, there's probably some I'll think of beauty counter. I've ordered some products from them. Um, I could go on and on and on, but the first thing that people usually ask is the question I've already covered. Is this a pyramid scheme? Okay. So what I will say to all of you who are, if somebody's already approached you, or if perhaps you and I have had a direct conversation, some of you will be watching this because I've had a conversation with you, or I've said, you'd be really good. You should join my isogenics team, or potentially somebody else is referring you to this show because they want you on their Beachbody team, or their Tastefully Simple team, or their Arbonne team, whatever. If you have this, oh, isn't this a pyramid scheme? Is this one of those things where you have to sign people up and, and blah, 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 and you have this queasy, weird feeling? I've already addressed the pyramid scheme, okay? Pyramids are illegal. That's like when I was growing up, I'm 50 years old. So when I was growing up, there used to be this thing where people would, would send you something in the mail and say, put a dollar bill in 20 different envelopes and send them to the people on this list and you'll get $1,000 back in an, you know, like those are scams. That's not selling anything. If you're joining a company and you do the research and you see, for example, Isogenics, I've done the research on Isogenics. They have been around, oh, I'm a little embarrassed. It's either 13 or 17 years. They are just at the tip of hitting a billion dollars in annual revenue. Um, they have fantastic products. It's in perfect alignment with me, what I stand for, fitness, health, and wellness, basically everything with Isogenics. Uh, the reason that I joined and decided not to just be a customer, but to proactively share the products and build a team is because as somebody who's been in the fitness, health, and wellness space, the line of products that they have is everything I've been buying on a regular basis from Vitamin Shop or GNC or Target anyway. Why wouldn't I buy them all in Isogenics where I know they're completely pure, free from sucralose, free from artificial colors and sweeteners. There's plant-based products that I need to take as opposed to a lot of them that are filled with dairy. They have all the products that everything I've been doing to educate other people on what you need to be taking, digestive enzymes, probiotics, um, CBD oil, all natural energy drinks, plant-based protein. I mean, I could go on and on and on. This is stuff that I've been learning I need to be taking I've been teaching others. I've been recommending products on amazon.com. Now I have a company where I can recommend products and make a lot more money when I recommend those products. When I recommend a product and I send you to Amazon, I'll probably make 50 cents to a dollar. When I recommend a product package with Isogenics, I'm gonna make 50 to $250 per recommendation based on several variables. I can make a much better income by recommending and sharing these products that I take, that I purchase, that I believe in, and then I'm gonna be recommending, I, I can make a lot more money with this company based on the compensation plan than I can by sending people to Amazon. Certainly than I can as an influencer working on a sponsored post for a brand. And a lot of you that might be watching this are influencers. You might be former Fitfluential ambassadors from the company that I used to run. You might be an influencer and a blogger that's involved with any number of other companies out there hoping to get sponsored posts. Here's the, and this is an appropriate segue here. Here's the big news flash about that. For all of you who are contracted with a brand um, and you're an ambassador and they're paying you maybe a quarterly stipend. They're sending you a certain amount of product every month and you might go, well, this is good. You know, I've got a good relationship with this product um, or, or this brand, or maybe you're a brand ambassador. There's a lot of supplement companies out there um, who have brand ambassador programs out there. And I know they pay commissions. 
But I can guarantee you a couple of things. Number one, as somebody who has run an influencer marketing agency for the better part of seven years, inevitably, what will happen, there are economic ebbs and flows. We're in the middle of what's probably the beginning of a, a pretty significant recession. That's when um, optional spending areas like social media, like influencers, like working with bloggers and paying bloggers to market and build brand awareness. That's when, when companies start to really cut back and save money. You as an influencer or a blogger who has been getting all of these perks and being flown in for trips and fun events, those will be the first things that will, that will be cut. And I've worked with enough big brands who around the new year, we would get a call. And I mean, these were big companies. I don't want to name specific names or, but these are fortune 500 brands who would call us and go, they just fired our entire social media department. We don't have any more budget for bloggers. We don't have any more budget for this. They're cutting the entire program. A lot of you who are watching this, you've been a part of a brand ambassador program where suddenly the rug was pulled out from underneath you. I can think of several people off the top of my head, some of whom are now involved in some of these companies like Isogenics or Beachbody or Tastefully Simple, whatever. They were working with brands, um, uh, whether it was through Fitfluential, and then they got hired by that brand and were getting paid several thousand dollars a month to do you know, blogs and content and, and video. And it seemed like the gravy train was flowing, but inevitably that brand was not seeing a return on their investment. And this is a lot of where there's a huge disconnect with bloggers and influencers because there's been a long period of time where bloggers and influencers were paid just because they had an audience. They were not paid on the results that they were creating. So what I mean by that, if you're, if you're listening to me going, what do you mean, Kelly? There's been a certain amount of time in the past years in the influencer marketing space where if a brand was working with you, they'd say, oh, great, Kelly, you, you have this, man, this much traffic on your blog. You get 50,000 you know, views on your blog every month. You have 10,000 Instagram followers. You have 70,000 um, followers on Twitter. Your total social reach is, let's just say, a quarter of a million people. That's awesome. So because we think we're going to pay you $1,000 a month to reach potentially 250,000 people, this is awesome. Beginning of the year, they think this is awesome. And they pick 12 bloggers that have that kind of reach. And they think, well, we're going to pay $12,000 a year per blogger times 10. That's $120,000 a year we're going to put out because that's going to get us in front of let's say 250,000, 2.5 million people. And they're probably thinking, we'll spend 120,000. I'm going to just do the math with you because if, if you don't know this, this is how brands will calculate this kind of stuff. So they're probably thinking, if I get in front of 2.5 million people, okay, here's what I'm doing, 2.5 million, and I convert 3%, I should make $75,000. Now, if they thought they'd only make $75,000, hold on. No, 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 forgive me. That's not dollars. That's 3%. They would think if they were getting in front of 2.5 million people through all those bloggers that I mentioned, that 75,000 of them would buy product, which let's say they're selling a $20 product. That's $20. So they would make $1.5 million if they, if, if those bloggers did what they said. And, and, and out of that, they ended up having 75,000 people buy. But what happens is the economy starts to tank. We have coronavirus and suddenly this brand at the end of the year has paid out, what did I say? Um, 10 bloggers times $1,000, $120,000. And instead of 75,000 people um, buying the product, Maybe they had a 0.5%. So it's, they, they were in front of 2.5 million people. And instead of, you know, 3%, they did 0 0.0025. So that's like what? Maybe this many people bought a $20 product. So then they've only made $125,000 at the end of the year. And they've spent $120,000. So they're only like, 
profiting potentially $5,000. Somebody at the end of the year has to go to their boss and go, okay, here was my great idea in January. I said we were going to hire 10 bloggers and reach 2.5 million people and have 75,000 customers buying 20. What did I say? 75,000 was 75,000 times 20. I said we were going to get $1.5 million of sales out of these people. But instead, we got, what did I say it was? Whatever that was, $75,000. That person will probably get fired. And that entire, everybody's going to go, screw this. Influencers don't work. We're not going to spend money on influencers anymore. Or they'll put out a, uh, an edict within the company and say, we're not going to pay influencers anymore. It doesn't work for us. Okay. Now, a lot of you are getting on your high horse right now understandably and going, well, that's bullshit. I know that when I, you know, share something with my audience, they buy. Okay. Generally speaking, I've run an agency like this. I know six other owners of six other agencies and networks. Typically in the past, bloggers and influencers would do more of what I would call show and tell. They would put up a post and say, isn't this neat? This is awesome. They weren't really trying to sell the product. Okay. Here's the big news flash, okay? It doesn't matter if we're talking about network marketing. It doesn't matter if we're talking about corporate America. It doesn't matter if we're talking about you starting your own paleo brownie company. You make money when you sell, period. So if you're watching this and going, I wanna make X amount of dollars, I wanna make an extra $5,000 a month, but I don't wanna sell, I don't wanna be salesy, I don't wanna be that person. That's going to be me referring you to another show where I talk about a course I developed called The Opposite of Nice Isn't Nasty, where I teach people how, number one, sales is necessary to earn money, period. Number two, people are selling all the time. They just don't realize it. Number three, sales is not a dirty word. There are the bad salespeople who take advantage of people. There are people, let's use coronavirus as an example. The guy who goes out and buys, you know, buys up every hand sanitizer at the dollar store and says, I'm going to buy all of these hand sanitizers for a dollar because people are in need and I'm going to take advantage of that need and I'm going to sell these to them for $20 a pop or for $60 a pop because they're really hurting and they'll fight over it. That's shifty. That's evil. That's working without integrity. Those are the type of salespeople that deserve to be called schmuckwads. But if you are doing a quid pro quo, an equal exchange of services where I give you this product, you give me money for this product, this product is what you wanted, this product is helping you, this product is, is what you need, and you give me an appropriate dollar value for that, that's an equal exchange, that's selling, that's good, that's how you make money. So back to the blogger example, for those of you that are influencers, that are bloggers, that are watching this, at the end of the day, if you want to work with any brand or any company and make money, you need to be selling product. There is no brand who is going to work with you for five or 10 years and pay you $500 a month or $5,000 a month for a blog post that does nothing for them. Inevitably, that ship is going to sail, okay? Inevitably, that dog ain't going to hunt anymore. Somebody's going to go, why am I paying you 60 grand a year? Why am I paying you $12,000 a year? Why am I paying you? What is the point? You can argue, oh, it's brand awareness. Oh, I'm getting... At the end of the day, if somebody is paying you money and you're not doing anything to help forward their cause, would you do that? If you started your own paleo, let's say paleo brownie company, if you started a paleo brownie company tomorrow and it cost you um, every batch of 12 paleo brownies that you made, if it cost you $60 to make that and you were paying a blogger $50, let's just say 60. So say it costs you $60 for every batch and you're paying a blogger $60 a month to, to, to put up a blog post. And after five months, you've paid her $300 and you've given her a, a, a batch of 12 brownies. So you've you've actually paid her $120. So let's say $120. Now you're out $600. You've gotten all that exposure, but she's driven two sales. So you've made, let's say you charge $15. 
I have no idea what you would charge. 